go on to question number two. Okay, question number two. What do you think uh, about the youth meeting with adults as part of your youth service or for part of your youth service? Well, it's an, that's an interesting question that's come up because uh, that's actually what we do. And the reason we do that as a youth ministry and why I think it's important for adults and students to be together. I think this works especially, I think this is especially effective in smaller churches. If you're under a hundred and you still have a Wednesday night and you got the 20 or 30 people that show up on a Wednesday night for your adults and you have, you know, five to 10 students that are there, man, put those, put that group together and figure out a Wednesday night dynamic with your pastor to be able to uh, have a service together, an intergenerational service, which can serve both the youth and the adults. That's, that is a, to me, that is the picture of win-win because my students now, I said, look, and I work together with my, with my worship pastor, uh, that that's with us. And also, uh, one of the parents and said, Hey, why don't we just do this? We, Cause we were having worship leader come down and lead worship for us downstairs. He said, well, look, why don't we just come upstairs and we'll join in worship. And why don't we have some students? Because the worship leader is leading worship by themselves uh, up front. I said, well, why don't the students just help you? Why don't the students just, just help you do this? And so we came up with a plan where the students now, we participate every week. That is, we have worship, intergenerational worship together. Uh, tonight, we're actually doing the service. We're doing the whole service. I'm going to be able to speak. And then the students are doing a little skit. And they're leading worship. So it's very much... A, a together, right? It's really demonstrating that we are the church. We are all together the church. And I think it's a great benefit uh, to our students to be in relationship with these adults. And I think it's a great benefit for these adults to be in connection with these students. Because if you have a new adult there, well, then they get to see, look, that we have an active youth ministry. Uh, they're participating. And I just think it's, I think it's great. So my answer to that question is, if you have opportunity, even if it's just once a month, once a month, say, hey, look, our students will be willing to come up and lead worship. And maybe you as a youth pastor, you have some, you know, worship leading skills, you know, worship uh, leading skills. You can play a guitar or piano or whatever you may do. And you're going to practice. That gives you another opportunity to practice with your students. You can say, hey, guys, we're going to practice. We know that we have this Wednesday night coming up and you can call it Intergen or, you know, something like that. Come up with a clever, clever name for a collective worship service of intergenerational folks. And then you you have another opportunity to then work with your students to be able to say, okay, we have another discipleship moment here. Not only am I uh, three, uh, three weeks out of the month, are we teaching, doing our normal kind of youth programming thing, but we're also saying on, on sometime in between there, or even as a part of your Wednesday night, you're saying, hey guys, don't forget, we have these worship songs coming up, we're going to have practice together. And it gives you another opportunity to invest in your students right? But also gives your students an expression. They're able to express. You find kids that can sing, kids that can play instruments that can help lead worship. Uh, you have students who can come up and read scripture for you. And it, once again, it becomes a, a collective experience that I think the church is lacking today. Uh, because we have separated, because we have uh, youth over here and adults over here. They don't know each other. And I think it's a great opportunity for both students and adults to get to know each other on that level because the the older people in your church want to see younger people leading. They just do. It encourages them. It it causes them to say, hey, you know what? This church has a future. This church has uh, some great young people in it. And they get to talk about that. The adults do. When they say they went to uh, this intergenerational service, they're talking about it to people and they're letting people know, hey, this is what our church does. Our church believes that we're one church, adults, youth, one night a month, we do it every week. doesn't matter. Whatever you choose to do, right? I think it becomes a great opportunity that if you could find a way to do it, I would strongly encourage you to do it. All right. Before we get into um, number three, question number three, uh, I do want to tell you about this. I do have a new uh, series out called Do the Math, okay? Do the Math, okay? And Do the Math is a four-week series. And if you're, this is a great back-to-school 
uh, you know, back to school type of thing that if uh, you are interested in it, uh, it is a uh, four weeks where I look, I go through uh, the basic plus, minus, uh, division and multiplication. So the four lessons take you through that and the four lessons will be able to uh, basically it says, look, it's a Christian living series, right? What do you add to your life? What do you subtract from your life? What, where is the dividing line, right? I talk about division in the good sense of saying, look, that we ought to be separate or divided from some of the things that we have in this world, right? We should have, uh, uh, we should be divided from, you know, dividing truth from a lie. We should divide the world from, uh, you know, what God is is doing, right? There's a, there is a dividing line there and we should be on the, the best side, obviously, is be on, be on the Lord's side, right? Uh, not straddling in the middle. So there's that that good part of it. And then multiplication, uh, I did multiplication last because it's a great way to introduce your students to say, hey, by the way, we should be making disciples. We should be multiplying, okay? And so there's cool, I put in some fun math games, uh, things of that nature. So every week you have something that is fun to do. And I will put a link down in the show notes there if you're interested in do the math or you can, uh, you can have, Uh, a free lesson, by the way. And the free lesson uh, will be, uh, you can just get, you know, the first one, get addition and say, we'll try it out, see what it's like, right? So go ahead and you can, there'll be a link down below for there for that. You can go ahead and uh, download a free lesson, uh, the addition lesson, and then kick the tires and say, hey, we'll try this lesson. And if this goes well, all you got, you know, then we'll get the rest of them, right? Or if you say, well, just, we want it, Paul, just go ahead and support you. This is a great way to support the channel. It's a great way to support uh, the ministry here and letting me come live to you and all kinds of other things that I have going on, but it's a great way to do that. All you have to do is sign up for the newsletter and there it is right there, free lesson for you.